Why? Welcome back to the telephone at this hour of the night. <laughs> oh, be quiet, Billy boy. Must be a wrong number. I shan't answer it. Ah, there, it stopped. I knew it couldn't be anything. Now go to sleep, Billy. Very good watchdog. Go to sleep now. Oh, that woke me with such a start. There it is again, oh dear. Oh, 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 it's all right, Billy boy. Be quiet now. Oh, well, I suppose I'd better answer. Though whoever it could be, I don't know. Hello? Is that you, Miss Nicholson? Yes, this is Miss Nicholson speaking. Who is that? This is a friend. Just to warn you to be on your guard. Be on my guard? What do you mean? Who are you? I told you, it's a friend warning you. Someone's after your money, Miss Nicholson, so be on your guard. Who are you? What do you mean waking me up at this hour? Be on your guard. They know about your money you've got hidden away. Oh. They'll go to any length to get it. Even murder. Oh. Yes, Miss Nicholson. Murder. <laughs> BBC presents A Case for Dr. Morell, another adventure by Ernest Dudley, with Cecil Parker as the famous Dr. Morell and Sheila Sim as his secretary, Miss Frail. Voice in the Night. Oh, well, as Dr. Morell would say, the best way to find out is to go and see. Good morning. Oh, well, good morning. Is Dr. Morell in? Oh, well, he, he's rather busy. He, he doesn't see anyone except by appointment. Oh, you see, it's rather urgent. Oh, not another matter of life and death, I hope. Oh, how funny you should say that. Hmm? As it happens, it is. Oh, oh, well, if it's as serious as that, uh, would you like to come in? I, I'll see if I can speak to the doctor. Oh, that's very kind of you. Uh, come in. My name is Miss Nicholson. Oh, I really oh, am. I'm so glad. And I'm most anxious to see you. Uh, could you give me any idea what it's about, Miss Nicholson? Yes. You see, I'm going to be murdered. I see. Huh? Did you say murder? That's right. Oh, yes, yes. That's what I thought you said. Oh, dear, yes. Well, I thought perhaps if he'd be so kind, Dr. Morell might look into the matter. Well, he... He's really most awfully busy. Oh, I know. I should have telephoned or written to ask him for an appointment. It is usual. But it might be too late by then. By when? By tomorrow. Oh, uh, when do you expect to be murdered? Oh, tonight? When in the process of planning the crime, or in its actual perpetration, uh, the criminal invariably fears uh, the envy of the gods. In the manner of the builders of the Temple of Nikko of Hondo in Japan, uh, famous for its temples of the first and third shoguns of the Tolagoa dynasty. After the temple builders had created one sepulcher of flawless beauty, uh, they realized it might evoke the gods' envy, and so, uh, to appease them, uh, they deliberately made a mistake in the symmetry in one of the columns. Uh, Dr. Morell, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. You have finished your other work, Miss Frail? Uh, yes, but... Uh, good, uh, then perhaps I may continue dictating these notes to you instead of into this dictating machine. Uh, yes, Doctor, but there... I would prefer that. Oh, would you? Well, uh, there's a Miss Nicholson to see you. Who is she? Well, she's rather eccentric, I'm afraid. Seems scared that she's going to be murdered. I did my best to get rid of her, but... To get rid of her, Miss Frail? Well, I, I know you don't want to be bothered with some stupid time-wasting crank. You think that to see Miss Nicholson would be wasting my time? Well, she did say something about one of your patients being a friend of hers, but oh, she's obviously got some ridiculous bee in her bonnet. If that's your opinion, Miss Frail, uh, then in that event... It is most definitely. I'll make some excuse. Don't worry. Uh, you interrupted me. I was about to say that in that event, it would be better if I did see her. Oh. Uh, will you inform her that I'll be pleased to see her now? Yes, Dr. Morell. I'll go and tell her. It started exactly a week ago, Dr. Morell, or is it a bit longer? Anyway, ever since that night at 12 o'clock, someone has telephoned me warning me I'm in danger, that I'm going to be robbed of my money. And I've heard mysterious footsteps outside the house when it's dark. You say it was a man's voice on the phone? Yes, always the same. It sounded as if he was disguising his voice. Where do you live? Number 5, River Street, Chelsea. 
It's just off the embankment. You live all alone? Except for my dog. He's been with me 11 years. He's getting on a bit, but it's only a small house, you see, and I can manage quite well for myself. My tastes are very simple. Have you any relations? Not one, I'm afraid. There was my brother, but I haven't seen him for three years. Last time I heard he was in New Zealand, I think. What is South Africa? You have no idea who might want to cause you any harm? None at all. I really can't think of anyone. Oh, well, there was a... Ah, but it couldn't be him. Who, Mr. Coulson? Well, it's only that my dog does bark at strange noises, and one or two people have complained there was Mr... Oh, but no, it couldn't be him. Why didn't you deposit your money in the bank? What money, Doctor? I haven't got any money. Why should this anonymous well-wisher think you have? Oh, I suppose it's some rumour that's what about because I live alone, or perhaps because I keep a dog. I don't know, really. Miss Nicholson... Why have you come to me instead of going to the police? Because this friend of mine, who was a patient of yours, Miss Hanshaw... Uh, no, it wasn't her. Anyway, she said you were very clever. That was extremely kind of her. Besides, the police don't believe me. They think I'm just a silly old woman. I can't believe that. It's true. I went to them when this horrid business first started. They just said they'd put someone on to keep a watch. I'm sure I haven't seen a policeman about. You would be in your bed when he's on duty. But I always take a look outside before I go to bed. At... It might be a plain clothes detective. Uh, you wouldn't realize it was a police officer. But surely they could get this man who telephones. I've told them it's every night at the same time. Well, it may present some difficulties. Uh, doubtless he makes the calls from different places. They did say something about that, or was it the clothes? Anyway, they were full of excuses. Uh, however, uh, leave the matter in my hands. And I will do all in my power to ensure that a stop is put to the trouble. I knew you would help me. As to the threat to your life and property, I imagine you need not take that too seriously. It is hardly likely that anyone would take the trouble to warn you of their intentions. After all, forewarned is forearmed. No, I suppose not. Thank you, Dr. Morell, so much. Dr. Morell? Uh, Miss Nicholson is just going, Miss Frail. Oh, yes, Miss Nicholson. I'll see you to the door. Thank you. And I'm most grateful to you, Doctor. Well, I'm sure we'll soon put your mind rest. Thank you so much. I can't say how really very grateful I am to you. Uh, but this way, really... Oh, yes, yes, I know. I mustn't take up the doctor. Do you really think she's in danger of being murdered? What? What, Miss Frail? Her handbag, she's left it behind. I was under the impression it was yours. Oh, really, Dr. Morell. I wouldn't be seen dead with a thing like that. I sincerely hope she won't. Hmm. It's more like an outsized tea cozy or something. Oh, poor thing, she won't have her bus there home. You'd better hurry after her. Yes. Oh, dear. The clasp's broken. Dr. Morell, look. Five pound notes. What of them? Her bag's full of fiver. It would appear to be quite a large sum. And I was worrying about her bus fare. There must be a thousand pounds here. Oh, she can't have got very far. I'll be right back, Dr. Morell. Well, I do hope so. All seaports, railway termini, and airports will be watched. What do you mean? In case you are harboring an intention to flee the country with the loot, Miss Frail. Oh, Dr. Morell, really. You quite made my heart turn over. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Harley Street. I'll just dash down to the corner. Not a sign. She's completely vanished. Oh, well. She'll soon come dashing back when she realizes she's left it behind. I'd better go back to Dr. Morell. She's vanished into the blue. More probably into a taxi. And now perhaps I could proceed with dictating my notes. Oh, well, I don't suppose it'll be long before she turns up again. I had arrived at the allusion uh, to the criminal's obsession that the fates will envy his success and was citing the temple builders of old Japan. Now, where did I got to? Temple builders of old... Let me switch on the machine. After the temple builders had created one sepulchre of flawless beauty, they realized it might evoke the gods' envy. So to appease them, they deliberately made a mistake in the symmetry in one of the columns. That was it. <laughs> That's the same as the Persian rug makers, isn't it? They leave a flaw in the design so that Allah won't think they're trying to create something completely perfect in his sight. 
That's the way you can tell a Persian rug if it's genuine. Uh, might I be permitted to continue with what I was about to say? Oh, yes, Doctor. I, I was only... Thank you, Miss Freya. Uh, the criminal believes that no intelligence and cunning will provide him with protection against this vengeance of the gods. And it is this factor which subconsciously urges him to commit some mistake in the crime he perpetrates, uh, which provides a clue for the investigating detective to follow up uh, to the culprit's inevitable downfall. Hello, this is Dr. Morell's house. It's Miss Nicholson, dear. I'm so sorry to bother you. Oh, hello, you, Miss Nicholson. It's all right. Your handbag is here. It's perfectly I'm safe. Afraid. I must have left it in the It's all right, Miss Nicholson. It's here. Have a look for... Oh, oh, you say it's there. You found it. Yes, I rushed after you with it, but you'd gone. Oh, I happened to get a taxi as it was passing. I didn't realize I hadn't got it until I reached home. Do forgive me for giving you all this bother. Oh, that's all right. By the way, the, the cloth came undone. There seems to be some oh, money. Dear, what a nuisance. It's quite safe. Only you ought to have it mended, you know. Yes, yes, I know. It always happens. Uh, uh, when will you come back for it? Well, I simply must get lunch for my dog now. Uh, he's very old, you see, and it upsets his digestion if his meals aren't served regularly. Uh, this afternoon, then. I shall be in. Uh, I always rest in the afternoon. I was wondering if I could call tomorrow. Oh, yes, of course. So there are one or two. Such as a thousand pounds, for instance. I was wondering how you got oh, in. Oh, not my front door key. I always leave that under the mat. No, it's the keys to my desk. Oh, dear, how silly of I tell you what, Miss Nicholson, I'll bring it along this evening. Oh, no, I can't put you to all that inconvenience. Oh, no, it isn't really. I'll be along about six. Oh, you're most awfully kind. I'm very, very... No trouble at all. See you then. Goodbye. I really must be going. Billy Boy will be famished. Who? Oh, the dog. Uh, that was Miss Nicholson, Dr. Morell. I'm going to return her handbag for her this evening. Uh, she made no comment regarding the money? No, she didn't say anything. I see. Uh, would you get me Embankment Police Station on the phone? Embankment Police Station? Yes, Doctor. I would like to speak to the superintendent. He may have some information on this matter. I've got the name and address, Dr. Morell. Miss Nicholson, number five, River Street, Chelsea. What you're saying is doubtful if she's been to the police about it at all. It has occurred to me, Superintendent, that as she'd apparently been less than truthful about the state of her finance, uh, she might have lied concerning the other matter. I mean, the fact of the phone call still persisting suggests that she hasn't put in a complaint. If she had, the post office would have been notified, and arrangements made for the calls to be intercepted by the exchange operator. Uh, so that Miss Nicholson would no longer be troubled by them? That's the least that would have been done. Steps might even have been taken to try and nab the caller. Precisely, Superintendent. Yes, I expect she imagined the whole thing. Plenty of people going about believing something that's never really happened. Uh, nevertheless, I've telephoned to confirm whether or not Miss Nicholson has been in touch with you. Quite. Uh, you don't want to take any chances. Nor do we, for that matter. Well, I'll ring her back, Doctor. I'll give the station officer a buzz. Station officer, embankment police. Yes, sir. What's her name? Uh, Miss Nicholson. Well, not here. No, no one of that name's made any complaint like that. If anything comes in, I'll let you know. <coughs> Bit of a fog coming up from the river. Good afternoon. Oh, I don't know what's good about it. Oh, it is a bit foggy. <coughs> There hangs about your chest. Uh, you're the officer in charge. I'm not very used to police stations. In fact, I've never been in one before. Always got to be a first time. Eh? What can I do for you? Well, I've thought about something that I thought you might care to investigate. Oh, yes? My name's Julian Smith. I'm an artist, and I live in a small house in River Street. River Street? It's quite near here. Oh, I know, sir. My next-door neighbor is an eccentric spinster named Nicholson. During the past week or more, I've heard footsteps outside her house at night. And several times I've heard her telephone ringing at midnight. You work late, I suppose, Mr. Smith? Oh, often. Just now I'm rushing through some work. What was it about these footsteps and phone ringing that made you think it ought to be reported? Well, just that it sounds a bit mysterious, the phone going like that. It struck me as being a bit odd. Miss Nicholson lives alone, and apart from being a funny old girl, she's rumored to have a considerable amount of money tucked away in the old sock or under the mattress. Nothing else which aroused your suspicions? No, that's all, officer. I just thought I should let you know in case. 
I hope I haven't wasted your time. On the contrary, Mr. Smith. We appreciate your coming here, and I certainly see that it's inquired into. Right. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much. Mm. Put me through the superintendent, will you? Six o'clock. Dear me, it's got so very dark. That horrid fog. I think I'll draw the curtains, too. It makes it cozier. Lie still, Billy boy. You stay warm by the fire. And you're not to bark when that young lady comes. She's bringing something for me. She should be here soon, though she may have been delayed by the fog. It's so very kind of her to take all this trouble. Oh, dear. I do wish it wouldn't ring. It startles me so. Be quiet, Billy boy. Ugh, I don't know whether to answer it or not. Billy boy, be quiet. Perhaps I'd better. It might be the young woman to say she's been held up by the fog. I, I'd better answer it. Hello? Be quiet, Billy boy. Miss Nicholson speaking. Who is that? Be quiet, Billy boy. Now, there's a good dog now. This is Embankment Police Station. Station office speaking. Oh, oh, yes. I thought I'd let you know that Dr. Morell will be coming to see you this evening. Oh, oh, yes. How very kind of him. Superintendent Denham will be with him. Yes. They want to have a word with you, just to see that you feel safe and secure. Oh, how very kind. It might have startled you, people arriving unexpectedly out of the fog, so I thought I'd let you know. You won't be scared when you hear that. How very thoughtful of you, so very kind. Uh, I think I can hear someone now. No, no, it can't be. Billy Boy would have barked. Well, they wouldn't have arrived yet. Yet I thought I heard footsteps outside. Ah, yes, it will be the young woman I'm expecting from Dr. Morell. Will you hold on, please, while I go and see? I don't want to leave her outside in that fog. I'm just coming. No, Billy boy, you wait there. You don't want to go out in that nasty fog. Is that you, Miss Fr Oh, who is it? Oh! Oh! <laughs> River Street, all right, miss. Know which end it is? I'm afraid not. <coughs> oh, fog's not getting no better. Uh, what's the number we've stopped at? I'm trying to see, miss. Looks like 29. Yes, 29. Opposite side, it's 30. So number 5 must be the other end of the street. Yes. We've got our bearings a bit anyway. Good. I'll drive slow. We don't want to end up in a river, do we? No, we don't really. Here we are. Number five it is. You've been awfully clever. That's all right, miss. Would you wait for me? I, I shan't be a few minutes. All right, miss. Mind how you go. You can't see a hand before you. <laughs> well, I don't really want to see a hand before me. Oh, where's the bell? Oh. Oh, the door's half open. Uh, miss Nicholson, are you there? Miss Nicholson? It's Miss Frail from Dr. Morell. No one at home. Not even her dog. Perhaps she's fallen asleep. Oh, not in the front room. Well, I'll try in here. <gasps> oh, Miss Nicholson! Oh, oh, she's dead. Oh, I must get help. Where's the phone? Who's there? Who is it? Are you all right, Miss? Oh, oh it's you, driver. Oh, I wonder what had happened. Blimey, is she? I'm... I'm afraid she's dead. Want me to help you lift her? Oh, oh no, I, I don't think we ought to touch her. Why? What do you mean? Oh, what's that? It's a dog. Oh, Miss Nicholson. He must have dashed out when the door was left open. It knows something's happened. We'd well, better get it into the next room. Yes, come on. The phone will be in there. Oh, I, I must get Dr. Morell. <laughs> Quiet. What's going on? A copper. The police. That's right. I'm from Embankment Police Station. Who's this? Oh, Miss Nicholson. I found her. Well, this is Miss Nicholson, eh? And you found her like this? Yes. Let's have a look at her. Mm. Is she... she dead? Seems like it. Oh, poor thing. Perhaps we might know who you are, miss. Well, I'm Miss Frail, uh, Dr. Morell's secretary. Dr. Morell? Yes, 
I came here by taxi from Harley Street. That's right, I brought her. That's your cab outside? That's right. What would you be doing here? Well, this handbag, she, she left it behind when she called to see Dr. Morell this afternoon. So you were returning it. May I have a look, please? There's a lot of money in it. The clasp was broken. Oh, it's full of five-pound notes. I know. And you say you're Miss Frail? Well, of course. Well, surely you don't think that I had anything to do with this? Of course she didn't. I can swear to that. Well, I believe you, miss. Now, this is a bit of an odd business. Well, you can easily phone Dr. Morell. He'll confirm who I am and, and what I came here for. Dr. Morell's already on his way here. But, what? Well, I mean, how could he know what's happened? He must be psychic. He doesn't. Superintendent Downs bringing him. They wanted to have a chat with her. Something fishy is going on. The superintendent spoke to Dr. Morell. I just remembered something. What? What is it, miss? Miss Nicholson. She said she was going to be murdered tonight. <laughs> That'll be them. Quiet. It's all right now. Be quiet. Is that you, Superintendent? Yes. Oh, Dr. Morell will be with him. Oh, I better get back to me taxi in case anything's happened to it. Dr. Morell, it's me, Miss Frail. And it was while you went out, Superintendent. I was on the phone to Miss Nicholson about you and Dr. Morell looking in on her mm-hmm. when she asked me to hold on. Someone was at the door, she said. And as she didn't come back to the phone, I thought something had happened. So I came round here quick as I could. And Miss Nicholson? Miss Frail had got here before me. She found her. Where is Miss Nicholson? In there, Doctor. She's... She's, she... uh, she's had it, I'm afraid. You didn't hear who it was who came in while she was on the phone? Oh, not a thing. You wait here, Miss Frail. Yes, Doctor. Just coming, Dr. Morell. Uh, better call an answer. I'll do that, Superintendent. And tell him at the yard. Watch out for fingerprints. Right. Whoever it was, put the receiver back. Uh, be some delay getting here in this fog. What's it look like to you, Dr. Morell? Obviously attacked by someone with a heavy stick or something similar. Yes. Looks as if she was dragged into this room out of the way. Nothing seems to have been disturbed. Well, whoever it was must have been scared off. Maybe the dog. Let's go back to the others. The ambulance is on its way, Superintendent. Good. I'm afraid the fog's getting thicker than ever. Same with the yard there on the way. When you were on the phone and Miss Nicholson asked you to hold on while she went to answer the door, you heard nothing? I heard her put down the receiver. And I heard a call out to someone. You didn't hear anyone else's voice? No. Well, come to think of it, Superintendent. That must fit in with that arse chap. Who came to see you this afternoon? Called himself Julian Smith. Are you suggesting it was he who was telephoning at night and prowling around the house? And then he calls at the police station to build up an alibi. But why should he do that? He lives next door. He'd want to point the finger of suspicion away from himself. What do you think, Dr. Morell? It is a possibility. Yes. If only she hadn't lied to you the way she did. You mean about not having any money? Yes. And that she'd been to the police when she hadn't. Then we could have prevented all this. Well, how could he quiet? Sounds like someone at the door. Who is there? Is anyone there? It's Nicholson. It's that man Smith. Returning to the scene of his crime, eh, Dr. Morell? Anyone at home? Miss Nicholson. You all right? I saw your door open. Oh. Good evening, Mr. Smith. Oh, it's you, officer. And this is Superintendent Denham, Mr. Julian Smith. And Dr. Morell, not forgetting Miss Frail. Quite a party. What's happened to Miss Nicholson? You wouldn't have any idea about that. No, why should I? Oh, it's only asking, Mr. Smith. I I was a bit concerned about her welfare. That's why I called at the police station today, as this officer will tell you. You say you noticed the front door open? I was passing on my way home. I saw the taxi cab waiting, then the door open. I had a feeling something was wrong. I'm sensitive to that sort of thing. No doubt you would be. Artistic temperament and all that. Quite and so I came in. What are you barking for? Oh, it may be the ambulance. I'll go and give them a hand. I would like to have a word with the attendants. Shall I come too, Doctor? Uh, there is nothing you can do, Miss Frail. Mr. Smith, you told the station office about hearing the telephone ringing here at night and footsteps. Uh, I work late in my studio, and I've been hearing the phone ring at midnight, and then these footsteps, as if someone was creeping about the place. You heard this last night? Yes. That's what made me go to the police station. I thought it was about time it should be reported. Hmm, there's a very public spirit of you. I was afraid the old girl might be in some danger, and it looks as if I was right, too. It certainly does, Mr. Smith. The ambulance is just going. The fox be holding up the yard. Oh, they'll be here. Anything new, Doctor? Only this. What is it? A book of matches. Found underneath the body. And since this house is all electric... Uh... Are you aware, Mr. Smith, whether or not Miss Nicholson smoked? I didn't see her often, but I don't remember noticing that she did smoke. What's happened? Oh. Who are you? Is anything wrong? My name's Nicholson. I'm Miss Nicholson's brother. I'm afraid that... Miss... Something's happened. I saw the ambulance. Try and take it easy, Mr. Nicholson. 
I'm Superintendent Denham of Embankment Police Station. Police? And this is Dr. Morell. And uh... She's dead. Oh, this is terrible. I knew Miss Nicholson slightly. She said something about having a brother in uh, New Zealand or South Africa. South Africa. Mm-hmm. I only got back a couple of days ago. I haven't seen her since three years. So she wasn't expecting you? Oh, no, nothing like that. Why should the police be here? I'm afraid your sister was attacked by someone. Murdered? But who would want to murder her? That's what we're here to find out. I think I might as well be getting along. Oh, but... if you wouldn't mind waiting, Mr. Smith. Just one of the questions I'd like to ask you. Well, I... Uh... Unless you're in a very great hurry to leave. Oh, no, no, that, that's all right. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Hello? Yes? It's for you, Dr. Morell. Ah, yes. Dr. Morell here. Good. Thank you. Uh, That was the hospital, Mr. Nicholson. You may be glad to learn that there is every hope that your sister will recover. She wasn't dead after all. Not dead? She's alive. It was a mere thing. But you didn't quite succeed in your attempt to murder her. What? If you're trying to be funny, I don't think this is the time for it. Dr. Morell. The book of matches. That's it. That's what brought you back after you left her for dead. I tell you, I... You were afraid it would give you away. Well, I... You must be mad. I tell you, I haven't seen my sister for three years. I've only just got back to London. And where are you staying, Mr. Nicholson? What's the name of your hotel? My hotel. Shall I tell you? The Hotel Regal, where these matches came from. I... I... I shouldn't try to run for it. It'll be Scotland Yard. about going out on a beastly foggy night like this, Dr. Morell. It's very nice to get back to Harley Street. Uh, yes, I'm anxious to continue work on those notes I had to leave. I must. I thought Superintendent Denham was jolly quick spotting about those matches. He was a trifle premature, in fact, although with justification. Oh, I, I know you have done all the work for him, but... Doctor, I've just thought of something. Have you, Miss Frail? It wasn't really the matches after all. No? It was the dog. You begin to interest me. The barking dog. We barked at everyone who was a stranger, but not at the brother. That's it? Yes. I recollect now that, that the policeman didn't hear the dog over the phone when Miss Nicholson went to answer the door. If I may be permitted to begin dictating. That was really what gave him away, wasn't it, Doctor? Precisely. And you were keeping it up your sleeve. I'm waiting, Miss Frail. But, Dr. Morell, doesn't the idea thrill you? That blessed dog, barking at all the innocent people, and not at the one who was guilty. I mean... That's a classic example of... of... It is. In fact, my dear Miss Frail, a classic example of that subconscious compulsion, that obsessive inner force, which urges the criminal to return to the scene of his crime. Oh. Oh, uh, I was going to say, of a dog barking up the wrong tree. That was another adventure in a BBC series featuring Ernest Dudley's famous character, Dr. Morell, and, of course, his secretary, Miss Fred. The artists taking part were Dr. Morell, Cecil Parker, Miss Frail, Sheila Sim, Miss Nicholson, Hester Peyton Brown, Billy Boy the Dog, Percy Edwards, Mr. Nicholson, Alan McClellan, Superintendent Denham, Fred Yule, the station officer, Alan Keith, Julian Smith, and the taxi driver, John Baker. This recorded program was produced by Leslie Bridgemont.